here at plate A, and you are plate B, and you are going away from me, then I can measure your velocity with respect to me. But between us, there is the trench, uh, the ridge, I'm sorry. Between us, there is the ridge. And this ridge will always be between us, and it will all also move away from me, but at half the velocity. Because the ridge is moving away from you, and also from me. So if I'm standing here, there is another plate, and there is a ridge between us, then the other plate moves away at twice the velocity of what the ridge is doing. And many people make a mistake about this in the exams. So the ridge moves at half the velocity of what the other plate is doing. Now let's make this little exercise just a little bit more complicated. And we consider now plate A and plate B, and plate B is now completely inside plate A. And we have seen these little markers here. It's very similar to the previous exercise. And um, at the situation at 70 million years, we are going to the situation at 33. And the motion of the trench in 20 million years, this is zero. The question is, what will happen here over geologic time? Well, we have seen what happens on this side. That was the previous exercise. But on the other side, there is now a trench. The plate is subducted. So, over time, we know that plate B has a very bad future because it is, has to be disappearing. After some time, all of plate B has been subducted and the gap here will be filled by new plate A. But before that happens, there are some complications. So, 70, 60, 50, 40, 33 million years, the ridges are here. There is still the little transform here, but notice that this part of the ridge has now touched the subduction zone. And at that point, you form two new triple junctions and the new plate boundary. And in profile, what happens is that the subduction, the subduction zone stays here and the ridge comes closer and closer to the subduction zone. Now, some people think that that means that the ridge is actually going into the subduction zone. But if you look at this profile, I think it, you will be more convinced that what happens is that the ridge basically stops existing. Okay? This half will go into the subduction zone, but the ridge itself will not go into the subduction zone because the ridge doesn't exist in the subduction zone. So simply, the ridge plate boundary stops existing and you get something else. In this case, because this is plate A and this is also plate A, there is no plate boundary here. If on this side you would have another plate, then there would be a boundary. Okay, so we have now understood this aspect. Let's go and have a look at velocities. And this is a little bit more complicated. The explanation of this exercise is in the book by Cox and Hart, so you can look it up. The problem is the following. I have now three plates, A, B, and C, and I know that these three plates have these boundaries. I have mapped them on the seafloor. I know that there is a trench between B and C, and the relative velocities are like this. I also know that between A and B, there is a transform, and the relative velocities are like that. The question is, what kind of plate boundary is this here? 
How would you go about solving this? Well, of course, the explanation or the method is has to Im include or has to involve vectors. And if you realize that when you sit in three boats on the sea and you take the velocity from one boat towards the other and the second boat towards the third and then the velocity of the third boat towards the first one, you will get three vectors which form a closed uh, triangle. And you can do the same thing with plates and make a, what is called a velocity diagram. So you take the velocity of A versus B, B versus C, and then what you can calculate is the velocity of A versus C. And if you've done that, then you will find out that the velocity of A versus C is in fact parallel to the plate boundary. And therefore, this boundary must be a transform boundary. So this is the way that you can use velocities to calculate uh, the one missing velocity between three plates. And this analysis has a very, very famous example. Um, the example was done by uh, Tanya Atwater, who is now a professor at one of the um, Californian universities. And she has considered in the 70s the following problem. In California, the geologists know the San Andreas Fault. It is a big transform fault. It is dextral. It is on land, and the geology has been measured uh, it has been studied in great detail. But the San Andreas Fault, uh, just north of San Francisco, goes into the sea. So at that time, geoscientists didn't really know what happened there. They knew that there was a fracture zone here, the Mendocino fracture zone, but it wasn't clear how the ocean, the Pacific plate, could make this big change in direction and continue because of course everything would fall apart if that would be a curved plate boundary. So it was a big, big mystery of what, of what happens here. People of course knew about the Pacific plate, um, but not so much was known about this part here. And what Atwater proposed is that this little place here, that is what we were looking at, was in fact a small microplate. It was the remnant of a plate which used to be much, much bigger, um, but which was being subducted and which was getting smaller and smaller because the ridge was getting closer and closer to the North American plate. And what she has done is she has made a velocity triangle. She assumed that there was this little plate here. And then what was known is, of course, this plate motion here. And she also knew that this small plate, which she called the Farallon plate, was moving away at 58 millimeters per year. And then if you take these two vectors, 56 and 58, then you can calculate the velocity of this little plate against the North American plate. And the result was, is that she predicted that there was a subduction zone here. And this is very interesting because this subduction zone, which has later been proven to exist, it was not shown, for example, by a very deep trench. And there also were not a lot of earthquakes to show you that there is a clear Benioff zone. The explanation, which um, came a little bit later, was 
that in fact the velocity between these two plates is rather small. You can see that these two arrows are quite long, but this is not so long. So the subduction is a very slow subduction. And at the same time, the plate which was being subducted is very young. It is very close to the ridge. So the young oceanic lithosphere is still very warm. It is very ductile and it is going into the subduction zone very slowly and therefore it cannot remain cold enough to form earthquakes. What we do know is that there are some volcanoes on this side of the subduction zone. For example, the famous Mount St. Helens, you've all heard about it. And uh, based on this analysis, there was a prediction of a microplate and the analysis and the prediction of a subduction zone which was later uh, proven to be true and uh, Tanya Atwater became quite famous with this analysis. So velocity triangles are really quite, quite powerful and they can show you how the plates are moving. Okay, so what we have seen today is that there are plates they are moving around and we have uh, uh, learned about how to analyze plate motion in terms of Euler poles on the sphere and we have learned some of the basic ideas about how boundaries between plates evolve over time and what happens if um, a plate gets smaller and smaller because one side is being subducted and the other side is getting uh, bigger uh, because of a trench. If you keep all these aspects uh, in your mind, then you will be able to understand much more about plate tectonics and the evolution of plates over time than just based on positions of plates, as you, maybe you have uh, learned in the introduction to, uh, to geology course. Thank you.